A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Last Sunday, Jesus had taken his disciples to Caesarea Philippi, one of the most politically charged towns in Palestine. There he asked them who others were saying he is, and then who the disciples themselves say he is. It can be said that Peter gave the nominating speech, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. As his political team, the disciples, especially Peter, are ready to flesh out Jesus' plan. They expect Jesus to march on Jerusalem, pick up supporters on the way, choose his moment, say his prayers, fight a surprise battle, take over the temple, kick Rome's puppet leaders out of the city, be installed as king, and then finally kick the dirty Romans out of Palestine. That's how God's kingdom will come. Today is Jesus' acceptance speech, and it is a whopper of a surprise. Yes, Jesus admits he is the Messiah, and here's what the campaign is going to be like. He must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. It's hard to overemphasize that this was not what the disciples expected. It's completely the opposite. Shocked, Peter did his duty as campaign chair by pulling Jesus aside and saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. Well, last Sunday, we heard Jesus compliment Simon by calling him the rock, that is, the foundation of the church. Today, Jesus calls Peter a rock again, but this time he says that Peter is an obstacle. The word Matthew uses is scandalon, the root word of our word scandal. At one level, scandalon is a rock that we might trip over. Thus, Peter is still a rock, but different from a foundation stone. At a deeper level, scandalon designates an unavoidable obstacle that somehow becomes more attractive each time we stumble against it. The tree of knowledge of good and evil was a type of scandalon for Adam and Eve. It was an obstacle to their possessing everything as their own in the garden, and the serpent managed to make the forbidden tree look very attractive. Jesus did not necessarily want to suffer and die. He would ask the Father to take this cup away. But he was obedient to the Father and loyal to the Father's plan. Yet Peter's urging him to avoid this path was truly tempting. If it had not been, Jesus would not have reacted as he did by calling Peter Satan, a word meaning tempter. 
Mark's version of this event says that Jesus rebuked Peter. In Matthew's version, Jesus does not reprimand Peter. Instead, Jesus says, Get behind me, Satan. You are a scandal to me. This is not a rebuke. It is an instruction. Jesus is saying that Peter is thinking as a human being, not as God. Get behind me is an instruction such as a teacher would give. Line up behind me, class, and follow me. Jesus is taking the disciples to a new place and belief, and he needs for Peter to follow and not try to lead. Jesus asks the ultimate question of Peter and the disciples, and he asks us how we find meaning in our lives. Matthew's answer is that we find meaning by being willing to get in line behind Jesus and follow him wherever he leads, even if it means ending up on a cross. The heart of Christianity is to serve and to serve sacrificially. We cannot serve others and not be willing to sacrifice our lives on the crosses of our life's journey. The sacrifice Jesus asks of us when he says that we must lose our life is not necessarily about death. It is about giving up our self-centeredness, our selfishness, and our temptation to tell God to serve our needs. Unfortunately, Jesus' statement, whoever takes up his cross and follows me, is often interpreted as, this is my cross in life to bear, without realizing that that attitude is individualistic and fatalistic. We don't merely resign ourselves to suffering. Taking up the cross is an act of willing choice to follow Jesus' plan even if, when it hurts. My sisters and brothers, we should serve God's needs and the needs of the kingdom. Giving ourselves to the Lord in just such a spirit of sacrifice is the only source for providing real meaning in our lives. If we want meaning, we've got to get in line behind the leader. May the Lord give you peace.